This video is about what's potentially the greatest and least recognized threat to our society and to us as individuals. Here's some general facts. 10% of the American population is now on antidepressant medication, and the rate for those prescriptions is increasing rapidly. 10% of the American adult population now has diabetes, and the rate for this disease is increasing rapidly. Another 20% of the American adult population has prediabetes, and again, the rate's increasing rapidly. If you're an American male, you have a 10% chance of developing Alzheimer's at some point in your life, and if you're an American female, it's a 20% chance. And again, the rate for this disease is increasing rapidly. 1% of American children are now born with autism spectrum disorders, and the rate for those disorders is increasing exponentially. Any one of these trends, if they continue, have the potential or in fact the likelihood of crippling or destroying our society within a few generations. And yet for all of these diseases, we're told we don't know the cause, or we don't know exactly what factors contribute most to the disease's rapid increase. And why don't we know the cause of these problems? Well, simply because we're not funding the broad and expensive studies necessary to determine the environmental and dietary risk factors associated with these conditions. Let me give you an example of how this works. Baby formula is a product now proven to approximately double a nursing child's risk of death overall. It took decades to develop that data, and that data was developed based on the deaths of thousands of children. The government never required the industrial manufacturers of baby formula to conduct these epidemiological studies. This data had to be developed by third parties in a very haphazard manner, and, and as I said, it took decades for that data to be developed. And yet, is the media telling you that formula feeding doubles your child's risk of death? Is there even a warning on baby formula? No. Even after this data has been developed by third parties, the vast majority of Americans still don't know that simple fact that formula feeding doubles your child's risk of death during the period when they're formula feeding. You see, nobody wants to believe it. It's so much more convenient to formula feed a baby and no one wants to develop the liability for these large companies. To this day, the manufacturers of soy formula, which is probably an even more dangerous product, have never been required to conduct studies to indicate what the actual risk is for feeding an infant soy formula. No one requires these companies to do a safety study of their products because the government doesn't want to generate liability for these companies, and the general public doesn't want to face the fact that a convenient practice is killing them. Let's look at Alzheimer's, a devastating, crippling, drawn-out disease, which 15% approximately of Americans are going to develop at some point in their life. And you probably don't think about it now, but 15% is a big chance that you're going to get this disease at some point. They haven't even conducted the most basic studies to determine what's the rate of Alzheimer's in a traditional society under traditional environmental conditions versus the rate of Alzheimer's in our modern society with a modern diet. That's the most basic study and it hasn't been conducted, much less conducting a more detailed study to determine the exact risk factors associated with various facets of diet or various environmental issues. And again, we don't conduct these studies at anywhere near the level justified because we don't want to face the truth. And even when we do occasionally conduct a minor study and develop some data, it's not publicized because the public doesn't really want to know and the media and government don't really have any interest in getting this information to you. There's a type of Alzheimer's, a very rare type, called CJD. It's caused by an infectious protein called a prion. Now, almost all prion diseases in humans are transmitted by the consumption of infected meat. And yet, when you look at the data that's been developed on CJD, Alzheimer's, in, in humans, all that you see is that 15% uh, of the cases are attributed to genetics and to surgical procedures, and the other 85% of the cases are of unknown cause. Well, the reason the other 85% are of unknown cause is because they've never studied a dietary link for CJD. If they did, they would almost certainly find that just like every other prion disease in humans, it's transmitted by infected meat. Now, maybe CJD is an extreme example because it would cost an enormous amount of money if we had to overhaul our entire meat production industry and people would be paying significantly more for meat. And so maybe the decision has been made at a governmental level or subconsciously at a scientific level that it's better not to know the truth if the only thing at stake is the death of a few hundred people per year from CJD. But let's look at a far more devastating disease, autism. The overwhelming message from the government and media is that autism is a condition caused by genetic factors. This is a disease which was unknown in the 1930s and now affects 1% of American children. That's clearly a condition being driven by environmental factors. 
and it's something we desperately need to address because at its current exponential rate of increase in a few generations autism is set to not just cripple millions of children but to potentially threaten the long-term viability of our society. Yet just as with baby formula, it's been over a decade since the problem of autism became apparent and the government, media, and scientific community are still basically in denial and haven't even begun to require the general epidemiological studies to determine potential risk factors for this disease, much less focusing on, in on the specific risk factors. Ultimately, America and the scientific community are either going to seek out the true causes of the epidemic of degenerative disease which is striking us, or we're going to determine that short-term profits and convenience are more important. It's up to you as an individual to learn about these issues and to protect yourself, in my opinion, most effectively by following traditional dietary practices. The dietary practices of societies which didn't suffer from this epidemic of degenerative disease.